Hey guys, so in the last video, I showed you how to create a Discord bot with its own name and everything, but it hasn't yet done anything because we haven't ran the bot yet in Discord. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to run your very own Discord bot using a Raspberry Pi. Before we get started, you need to have Python installed on your Raspberry Pi. So if you haven't yet done this, I've done a video on Python installation for the Raspberry Pi that you can check out. Next, you need to have already created a Discord bot. And I've done a video on this as well in the last episode, so definitely check that out. Okay, so let's first SSH into our Raspberry Pi, or you can simply start its terminal if that's easier for you. We need to first install the .env package for Python. And you can use the pip install command that I'm running here in order to do this. And by the way, any command that I run in this video should be available in the video description in case you wanted to copy it. So right after that, we need to install the Discord package for Python. And that's what we're doing here by running another pip install command to get the discord.py package. Just note that this one will take a little longer to install because there's a bunch of different dependencies that are being installed. Next, let's go ahead and create three different files that we'll be working with for the Discord bot. So to store our Python project, I'm gonna create a folder called discord-bot using the sudo mkdir command. And then after that, I'm using sudo touch to make three files in that directory, .env, bot.py, and administration.py. Then I'm using the sudo chmod command to make all these files readable, writable, and executable for anyone that has access on the network. So why am I doing this? Well, it's because I'm gonna use VS Code on my Windows machine to work on these files that exist on my Raspberry Pi. And of course, I need these files to be available for editing across the network share. So if you're wanting to do this on a separate computer as well, there's one thing I recommend you do. First, navigate to your Discord bot folder where you stored those three files. Notice how the .env file is not showing up. That's because your Raspberry Pi is assuming that the .env file is supposed to be hidden. But for us to actually work on it, we need this file to be visible. So what you can do in this situation from Windows is to go to View, Show, and then click Hidden Items. And voila, the .env file is now gonna be showing up. So now we're ready to start working on our Discord bot development. And I'm gonna switch to my Windows machine and open up VS Code, which makes it super easier to work on Python development. But if you wanna use your Raspberry Pi instead, that's totally fine. You can just use sudo nano, but just note that you won't get any code completion doing this. But either way, do whatever that makes it easier for you. So if you choose to go with VS Code, you can go to File, Open Folder, and then navigate to your Discord folder on your Raspberry Pi. And once you select that folder, you'll see that all three of our files are visible to us for writing our Discord bot. First, let's open the .env file. You can think of this as a config file where we'll be storing keys and values. And in our case, we just need two pieces of information stored here, the Discord token and the general channel ID. So first, I'm gonna show you where you can obtain your bot's Discord token. Let's go back to the Discord developer portal by visiting discord.dev on a browser. From here, click on Applications and click the one that you recently created. Then click on Bot from the left side of the page. Most of the time, when you visit this page, you might see a link to reset your token. If you already have it, great. But if not, that's totally fine since you can just click the Reset Token button. And then on the confirmation pop-up, just click Yes and then enter your credentials to verify it's you. Your new token should be generated and now is your one and only chance to copy it because otherwise you'll have to reset it again in case you lose it. So with the token copied, let's switch back to VS Code and paste your bot's token as the value of discord underscore token. Now let's get the second piece of information that we need, 
the general channel ID. You need to enable developer mode to do this. So let's go to the Discord homepage and then click on user settings. Scroll down until you see advanced and click on that. The developer mode toggle is usually turned off by default. So let's turn this on. After that, head back to your server from the Discord homepage and right click the general channel. You should now see an option to copy the channel ID. Let's jump back to VS Code and paste that ID as the value of general underscore channel underscore ID. So to recap, the Discord token is what we'll use each time we want to authenticate the bot. And the general channel ID is how the bot is going to find the server's channel and send messages to it. So let's save our changes here and then start building our bot.py file. We'll start by importing all the necessary packages that we need at the top of the file. If we don't do this, we'll be seeing a bunch of errors when we try to use a Discord API. The .env import is for us to access our config file to get the Discord token and the channel ID values. Next, we're going to create a class called bot. And within the class definition, we'll be adding a constructor before we do anything else. So as you can see here, the init call is initializing the bot with two things. First, the command prefix is how the bot is going to recognize commands that are used on the Discord channel. And then next, the intent tells the Discord API what kind of permissions to give the bot when it starts running. So currently, we're just going to go with the default permissions. And right below the class definition, we're doing a load underscore dot env call which is telling Python to load everything from our env file. And you can start to see how this works on line 16. We're saying to get the value assigned discord underscore token and then save it as a variable called token. We can now use this token just about anywhere in the bot file as many times as we need. And at this point, believe it or not, we are ready to actually run this bot. You can do this by creating a bot object and then calling the run method. Notice how run is taking in the token variable that we acquired earlier. Before we run the bot, let's just do a quick sanity check by going to our bot's Discord server. Notice how the bot is not online since it's not yet running. So I'll show you how to run the bot using a Raspberry Pi. So first, let's navigate to the Discord folder where our three files are stored by using the cd command. And to make sure that you're in the right directory, you can do an ls command and you'll see all three of those files there. Again, the .env file isn't showing up because it's hidden, but don't worry because it's still there. And so to run the Discord bot, you can use the Python command followed by bot.py because that's our entry point. And if you get logs like these, then that's a good sign because there were no issues. But let's jump to our Discord channel to see if our bot is now online. And boom, there you go. Your bot should now be showing up with a green dot and ready for action. But wait, the bot is online, but it's not yet doing anything. Don't worry, that's what we'll be working on next. So let's jump back to VS Code for more development. So now let's move on and shift our attention to the administration.py file. This is where we'll add custom behaviors for our bot like commands that they can listen to and react to. Just like what we did with bot.py, we'll start by importing all the different packages that we need. And the one that we really care about here is line one, which is for Discord commands. So let's first make it easier on us and load the environment variables from our .env file. After that, we're going to start with a class implementation called administration. We need to have commands.cog in the parentheses here because the administration class needs to inherit this behavior because otherwise the bot can't really listen for custom commands in our Discord channel. Again, just like what we did in bot.py, we need to add a constructor for the administration class. And the point of this is to initialize it and unlike the bot class, this one's a little more simple. We just need to store the bot as a class variable. So each time you need to have the bot do anything in this file, you can call it as self.bot. Now we're going to register the bot to this administration template. You can do this by adding a function called setup on this file. 
There are a couple of things that are happening here. The setup function is basically an entry point for the bot and it helps to register administration commands. Then the add underscore cog is what's doing the registering process by feeding it a new administration object with the bot that's wanting to use it. Also notice how this function is defined with an async call. That's because this is a code routine where we're telling Python that this is something that can happen asynchronously, where it doesn't have to wait or block execution. And each time you use an async function, you do need to make sure that you have an await inside it. Next, let's get to the more exciting part, getting the bot to react each time it goes online or runs in Discord. So inside the administration class, we're going to utilize a function called on underscore ready. This is guaranteed to be called each time the bot starts and is logged into a Discord server. So in line 13, we are defining a ready message that the bot will send to the channel. And also just a moment ago, remember how I mentioned that anytime we're doing anything with the bot, we need to use self.bot. That's how we're retrieving the bot's display name in Discord. So right below that line, we're now gonna retrieve the general channel ID. And the good thing is we've already acquired that and stored it in our .env file. So the getENV method is fetching it for us and we're converting it as an integer because it's stored as a string. So now that we have what we need, we just need to tell this bot to send this ready message in the channel. That's easily done by first getting the channel using the channel ID that we're holding onto. And then at the end, we're using the send function by feeding it our custom ready message. One last thing that you don't want to forget here is to add a listener decorator right above on underscore ready. This is telling our bot that this function is an event that it needs to actively listen for while it's running. And now that our administration.py file is wrapped up, we need to tell our bot to use it each time it runs. This can be done in the bot.py file, which is responsible for running the bot. So once you open it up, let's add a setup hook inside the bot class. So just like how the setup function was called each time administration was used, the setup underscore hook has the same concept here. The only thing we're doing inside setup underscore hook is to tell the bot to load an extension called administration. And the extension needs to be called the same as the file name of administration.py. This is case sensitive. And so with that, our bot is ready to let users know that it's ready for action. So let's go back to our Raspberry Pi, making sure that we're in the right folder where those three files are located. And we'll be rerunning the bot using the same command that we ran earlier. Let's quickly go back to Discord and bam, the bot is now sending the ready message in the general channel as soon as it was online. Anytime you need to kill the bot from running, by the way, just kill Python's execution by doing control or command Z. Congratulations with programming your very own Discord bot with its own listener. By the way, I've added comments to nearly every line of code that we went over in this video. And I've added this entire project in GitHub that you can access in the video description. So in the next video, I'll be showing you how to send your bot custom commands on your Discord channel. Thanks for watching. And for more on running Discord bots, please consider subscribing to this channel.